So now we're looking at the little gluteal muscle, the gluteus minimus, and the medius attached to the crest and ran down to the trochanter. The minimus is just a smaller muscle. It also attaches in this kind of curve to the inside of the iliac crest, deep, the medius is over it, and then deep to that is the minimus, and it then runs like a fan down to the, uh, to the same point, but deep to the, the, the medius. So you've got the medius above, attaching to the trochanter, the minimus below, about half the size, half the bulk, half the power. Its functions are the same as the medius. The, uh, it helps abduct the leg if you're standing on the opposite side. If you're standing on this side, it works together with the medius to stabilize the pelvis so that it doesn't drop as you, as you um, put your weight on this leg. Again, primarily a posture function. The minimus is absolutely fascinating because the, for, there are two sets of triggers. The first set of triggers are vertical. They occur here and here. And if they are activated, you feel some pain in your lateral buttock, but the pain is then referred in a thin band down your lateral leg, it misses the knee and then continues down your leg almost to your ankle. And so this mimics radicular or sciatic pain. And the distribution of the pain running down the outside of your leg mimics the uh, sciatica arising from the L5 nerve. Then there are a second set of triggers and they run along, very similar to medius, they run along the top of the muscle and these refer into the buttock and down the back of the leg, ending in the mid-calf. So this fascinating, fascinating, um, completely different and complex and for a lot of people very confusing pain reference zones because they so mimic, these mimic the S1 distribution of, of um, sciatic nerve distribution. Okay, the way to find, the, to find these triggers is they're difficult because they're deep beneath the um, gluteus medius. You know that they're minimus triggers because of their distribution, because the medius triggers, if you remember, mimicked low back pain. These mimic sciatica and they're lower down, you have to push far deep into, through the medius, but when they're active, they're super, super tender. And what is also really interesting is that you, by pressing on them, quite often you will turn on the pain in their distribution. So you have to press firmly. I tend to use my thumb. I support it with the other thumb. I press down and the person says, and I'm running across the long axis of the fibers. I find the tight band, search for the trigger. Once I found the trigger, we follow ischemic principles with pressure just below the pain threshold and then gradually increasing the pressure until the trigger melts away. Using cold, you would start at the origin 
and here this makes much more sense. You would start at the origin, over the trigger, into the insertion, down the pain distribution zone, and then you do two or three runs. Then you stretch the muscle. And just like the medius, there are muscle fibers that are in front and there are muscle fibers in the back. If the triggers are in the, in the, in the front, uh, you will extend the hip and drop it down. So can you lean your body forward like, like that? And if the triggers are at the back, you will flex the hip and drop the leg forward, stretching it out like that. And then heat and repeat the stretch. So, so there you are. We've looked at all these three muscles. And what's so interesting about them is that the pain reference zone is so markedly different in muscles that have the same functions and virtually the same anatomy. Uh, so this is one of the um, amazing things and confusing things about myofascial pain. Once you understand it, you have such power. And so if you were a, a normally trained doctor in, in most medical schools around the world, you would not in fact be aware of these trigger points and the fact is that they're actually really really common and so you would have somebody who had this pain running down their leg or running down the back or the side of their leg and you would assume from its pattern that this was uh, sciatica arising from a disc prolapse. You would do an MRI and the MRI would be completely normal which would then leave you very puzzled and you wouldn't actually know what to do. Whereas if you had this knowledge that this little muscle has these two sets of triggers and these triggers create pain in exactly the same distribution, you would be able to with your hands find the triggers, treat the triggers, no need for expensive investigations and the person after a few treatments would have be pain-free. This is exciting and is very empowering.